And welcome to this edition of uh, Hidden History, Stories from the Secret City. I'm Keith McDaniel, along with my co-host, Ray Smith. Good morning, Ray. How are you? Um, good morning. How are you, Keith? I'm good. And uh, we're going to get right into this. We have a special guest with us today. And Ray, I'm going to let, uh, let you introduce our guest. All right. I'm really glad that we've got Steve Oliphant with us today. Uh, Steve and I have met on the trails in Oak Ridge, and I'll let him introduce himself to you, but our focus today is going to be a lot about hiking in Oak Ridge and some of the hidden history associated with those trails. So, Steve, tell us a little about yourself. Well, I was born in Oak Ridge, and I grew up in Oak Ridge in the 1960s and 1970s. It's a wonderful time to be there, kind of the heyday of Oak Ridge after the, after the Manhattan Project. And I first started, uh, the first trail was the Northridge Trail, was built in 1970 in Oak Ridge. So I started hiking there in junior high. So I've been hiking on the trails in Oak Ridge probably 45 years, at least over 40 years. And it's just been a pleasure to see, at the time, that was a novel trail in anywhere in the United States to have a, an eight mile, beautiful, rugged trail right in your backyard. You know, everybody, just about everybody from the city could walk to that trail or probably less than a five minute drive. But what's been amazing is to see since that time, since I went off to college, went to Georgia, which runs state, and then I went to Georgia Tech for college. And, and when I came back in the 1990s after we lived in Texas, after I met my wife in Texas, um, I was amazed to see. Um, what is now 85 miles of hiking trails in Oak Ridge. <laughs> because when I was growing up, if you wanted to hike, you went to the Smokies, or you went to Frozen Head, or you went to the Big South Fork. And so we thought, you know, Oak Ridge will never, doesn't need hiking trails. There's plenty of trails ar around that you can go to within a, an hour or two drive. However, it's been amazing to see these trails that, that are so good today that on our hikes, Ray, w when you speak with us, our hikers are coming from two and three hours away to drive to Oak Ridge as, <laughs> as, a, hiking, <laughs> as a hiking destination. But also, I'm very fortunate that my mother uh, came to Oak Ridge in 1943. She actually slept on a cot, cot to cot, in the Alexander guest house as a secretary waiting for her dorm to be built at Charlotte Hall across on the other side of the tennis courts. So she first started working in building 9201-1 at Y12, the Alpha Calutrons, and um, worked there for 12 years. She was a secretary to the head of engineering, I believe his name is George Mitchell. Then my dad came in 1947, so he worked for, Ray worked with my father. He worked for 47 years in, in Oak Ridge, both at Y12 and the National Lab. Yeah. And, um, I was just fascinating when I'd go out there, pick him up and that type of thing, just to see all these, to see all these forests around and think, gosh, wouldn't it be great if someday there was a hiking trail? And now there, now there are. So thank, <laughs> thanks for having me, Ray. Oh, and, you bet. Uh, thank you. And uh, you did grow up in Oak Ridge in a, in a unique time. And in, in, in that era of Oak Ridge was uh, in, in huge transition from the the made, you know, 75,000 people here during the Manhattan Project, but down to about 30,000 and has stayed there ever since. But in the, in, as far as the hiking trails go, that, that North Ridge Trail is, I mean, you can't tell the difference from any other uh, wooded hiking trail that you might get in in the Smokies or anywhere. Absolutely. I mean, every once in a while, you'll get a glimpse of a house up on the ridge, but for the most part, you're walking in the woods, and 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 it, it's a really neat hiking trail. Let's let's focus on it for a minute, and then we'll get on some of the others. Hey Ray, let me Ray, let me interrupt for just a sure. second before we get started. Maybe you or Steve one can answer the question: How did these hiking trails come about? <laughs> you know, you said when you see when you're growing up here, you you know if you went, to, you didn't think about hiking trails in Oak Ridge. Right. No. Uh, how no, how no. did most of these come about? Uh, they they were wooded, uh, <laughs> wooden walk, uh, greenways, sidewalks or walkways, uh -huh. in, in the early part. But right. these, the project that actually brought these trails in here is the Greenway Project. Dan mm -hmm. Robbins yep. is uh, the person that had the lead role in it from my perspective. Uh, Steve, you may know more about the actual history of how the Greenways came to be. If you want to talk about that a little bit, I think that'd be a good thing to do. 
Well, it all started with the Northridge Trail in the 1970s, so the brainchild of um, Dr. Lee Russell, who was a scientist, a very prominent, well-known scientist at the Oak Ridge National Laboratory. And she loved to hike there before there was a trail along with many of her friends. And she was hiking one day on the, in the area and saw some red stakes where a power line was going to go down this city of Oak Ridge owned green belt that was laid out in the Manhattan Project by the city designers to have where almost every house could either have woods in their backyard or had woods across the street. So if you grew up in Oak Ridge, you played in the woods. So she saw that a power line was going to be built by the Tennessee Valley Authority and she got to work and said, no, we're going to turn this into a hiking trail. No, I'm going to turn it into a hiking trail. We're going to get it registered as a USA National Recreation Trail, one of the first in the United States. So therefore, it's permanently protected from development. Mm -hmm. So that was the origin. Now, <laughs> let's, let's focus just a bit on that. Then I want to go back to Dan Robbins. But just a little bit on where she saw those red flags, those little stakes. What's there today? Well, today is a trail. But it, in one of the places, um, I, I lead hikes on that uh, trail about three times a year with groups. We, it's, a, it's a narrow trail. It's a single track trail. It's only about 12 inch, only about a foot wide. So you have to walk single file. <laughs> That's a single track. Yeah. And one of the most beautiful places I call the Bill and Lee Russell Trillium Patch because it's at the top of some stairs where people are just winded and so some stairs is probably built by a scout, Eagle Scout project. And it's, it's a trillium patch that's almost an acre of um, red and yellow trillium that are just growing right on top of each other. And, and I brought a lot of world-class hikers to hike there and they say it's the best trillium patch in the state of Tennessee. So what was going to be a Trans, a big transmission power line uh, is now one of the best wildflower hiking trails in the United States. That's exactly right. And, <laughs> and it is only one, as you mentioned, of 85 miles. And I think if you really, if I really pressed you hard, you could find some additional miles other oh. than those 85 miles. Yeah, that, those, those, are the green, the those are the Greenway miles. They don't even include the Oak Ridge Arboretum right. and, and places like Fru uh, the Friel's Cabin. Right. So you could easily get over a hundred miles of public hiking trails in Oak Ridge. Yeah. That, those, that Greenway project though was what really added to the uh, North Ridge Trail. North Ridge Trail came along much earlier. Greenway's project, uh, I was trying to look here and see exactly when that was implemented, but uh, it, it is all of those trails, many of them paved uh, that are walking trails like the one by the, uh, down down by the Melton Lake, mm -hmm. that that's an excellent, and you'll see lots of people hiking on those trails. But uh, the, the ones that Steve and I frequent more is the ones like out in Hall Ridge or the North Ridge Trail or the ones uh, on the west uh, of Oak Ridge. That North, bound, North Boundary. North Boundary Trails, and, and uh, those, are, those are excellent hiking trails. Yeah, during this pandemic that we've had to be uh, careful who we get around. One of the nice things about being in Oak Ridge is in, as Steve said, in five minutes, I can be in the woods. And these, I take a hike almost every day. And I rarely see more than one or two people on the trails. And all I have to do is just step aside and we can maintain our distance and it's no problem. Right. And just enjoying being out in the woods. So um, again, within five minutes of the house. Now, let's delve into the history a little bit, Steve. I want to be sure that we talk about how the George Jones Memorial Baptist Church came to be preserved. Uh, and let me say just a minute about your dad. Yes, I worked with George Oliphant and other, others who worked at Y-12 will remember him as the department head for the electrical department. And I've told you this, but I've got to get it in this, in this uh, uh, podcast. One of the things I remember about George is that he was religiously intent on starting his meetings promptly on the hour when they were to start. I can see him now sitting in the conference room in building 9737, and he would sit at the head of the table. He always did, had this oval shaped table. Mm -hmm. He would sit there and the clock was on the wall down at the other end of the room, and he would just glance up periodically. And the instant that that clock got on the hour, when the, uh, when the meeting was to start, 
that's when he started the meeting. And if you weren't there, you knew about it next time, you wouldn't be late to one of George's meetings. <laughs> but tell us how he had some involvement in uh, preserving the, the George Jones Memorial Baptist Church. Well, we, my grandparents, uh, my mother's parents lived uh, near Sparta, Tennessee, Doyle, Tennessee on the Caney Fork River. So we would visit them. It seemed like when I was growing up, probably twice a month. It's, it's about maybe an hour and a half drive from our house. So we would drive right by the gaseous diffusion plant. As I can remember, first, first thing I can remember, probably the 19, early 1960s. And you could look through the woods and see this white church up there on government property that, that if any of my friends went there, that they were subject to being arrested and hauled before a federal judge because it was on government property. And my dad would say, that's just a beautiful church. I love it. You'll never get to see it. It's always going to be on government property. Maybe you could go to re a reunion sometime, maybe once a year and see that church. And, but um, it amazingly was really the only structure, historical structure in, in the whole um, K-25 reservation area that was preserved. I'm not sure exactly why it was preserved, but it was. Yeah. And it was um, fortunately in the 1970s and 1980s listed on the National Register, so it's permanently preserved. But today it's on the Wheat District Greenway. You can park, you, don't, you won't get arrested anymore for hiking there. It's one of the Oak Ridge Greenway trails. And um, it, was, it was built about uh, 1900. And it's really just one of about five or six structures that was pre-Manhattan Project that's, that's still there. It's kind of a mystery. I might reveal a little bit more if you will on a hike with me there why, why, why it wasn't torn down like everything else in Oak Ridge, but it, today it's a beautiful hiking trail. It is, and they've, they've added an extension to that trail that goes up to the, up a little higher on the hill to the uh, seminary, Poplar Creek Seminary that was up there. Uh, as you well know, that area before it was wheat it was called bald hill and it, during the time early 1920s it that area was a huge um, fruit growing area and they mm -hmm. packed that fruit and shipped it all over the nation uh stories are told about how far it got shipped and and steve goodpasture is a good resource keith that we need to get yeah. on here at some point to talk about that but uh, they had a hard winter and, in the 20s and, and froze all of the fruit trees. And that kind of took the uh, momentum away from that, uh, that area. But there was a college there, actually a four-year college at one time uh, that was certified uh, or accredited, I mean. And uh, so that area has a rich history uh, even before the, the Manhattan Project in 1942. They did use the wheat school for a little bit, but it, as you say, it's gone. But that church is preserved and they still have an annual reunion. The first Sunday in October of each year, they're still meeting there and, uh, and having the reunion of the, of the wheat community. So it's a good thing that that church has been preserved. I know one of the things you would talk about uh, if you had someone on a hike there are those huge millstones that are just right beside the church, comes from one of the mills. And uh, also, I think I saw a picture that you had of a, a hike recently there where you had some, some steps that are still left from some of the home places uh, around that area as well. Uh, let's move to Hall Ridge and let's talk about the, the silo. Tell us about the silo. <laughs> Well, we were going to have, Ray was going to join us, Keith, on uh -huh. March, I think it was March 22nd for a group right. hike, and that was right when the first social distancing requirements came out, and all the hiking clubs were postponing their hikes, but I had developed a patch for it. I'll see if, see if that can be shown yeah, right there. Oh, yeah. yeah. I had developed cool. a patch that we were going to give all the hikers called uh, um, Haw Ridge Park, Oak Ridge, Tennessee, the silo trail. You see it's got a picture of a silo. Mm -hmm. And it would have been a beautiful hike back in March. This time of the year it's maybe a little too overgrown. But there's a silo back there that's about two and a half miles from the parking area that would rival any of the best silos in 
Wisconsin or, or Minnesota or Iowa when, when you drive through there. And it's, it's an incredible secret. The secret city is, I'm not sure Ray even knew that much about it when I, um, no, no. yeah, when I kind of posted the picture, but, but as Ray's very inquisitive as everyone knows, and he was on it and, and he got a lot of information of, of, about the area, but we have kind of bracketed it that it was built um, after, correct me if any of these dates aren't exactly right, Ray, but built after 1942. Yeah. Uh, and before 1963. So it's a modern silo that would have been on public property or, or um, not, you know, not private property, on, on government property. So it's some kind of publicly built silo with a huge dairy farm and a huge cattle farm. And it, it's, it has a, a big money type feel to it. And it, it, to me, it's the finest art, artifact that's preserved in Oak Ridge and, and one of the best artifacts in all of Tennessee. Uh, if we had to really pin down the time that I think that was built, I think it was built during the Manhattan Project, and I think that was built, that had been in 43 to 45, and I think that farm was the place where they had beef cattle. Now, the, the, right beside the silo are, are really just concrete remains of feeding troughs, and uh, they run, what, a good, I don't know. Uh, Almost probably, 100 yards. Almost yeah, hundred yards, almost the size of a football field. Mm -hmm. From from the uh, right beside the the silo, so they had a huge amount of cattle running in that area, and I believe it was beef cattle uh, to provide beef for the for the city of Oak Ridge. And was that Ray? Was that was that the government that that had that farm? It would have been, yeah. That would have mm -hmm. been on government. It was the government uh, that built it. Mm -hmm. the army actually would have been the ones that put it in there. But now they would have had private individuals that would have been running that farm. They were, uh, they, they contracted, if you will, yeah. people to provide beef to the city. There's also on the west end of Oak Ridge, over near the country club, there remains a huge fenced in area. Now this is barbed wire fence, but it's the post for the fence are I-beams big steel I-beams and it, it's got, it, it's the most <laughs> it, it, unusual fence that I've ever seen there. It's so, so many strands of barbed wire, ain't no way anything could get through there. I'm convinced that it was a pig lot that they actually had, uh, had uh, pork being prepared there or, or grown there in, in, in the form of pigs. But then they had the cattle out on the, on the east end, I believe, out near where Hall Ridge is now. And I think that's what that silo was built for. I, I got most of my information from Steve Jones. Steve's family lived out in that area on Hall Ridge prior to the Manhattan Project. And he told me that the silo wasn't there when his people, when his family were living there. But it, it came in, I believe, as a part of how to feed uh, the 75,000 people in Oak Ridge. They'd eat a lot of beef. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure they had to ship it in, but they also tried to grow as much as they could uh, here locally. So uh, that's hollow. I, I hiked it at, immediately after you told me about it. I went to, went to it and it's a, it's a good hike. It's a couple of miles, like you say, but you can go around the, uh, the shoreline and you don't have to climb very much on the ridges or you can go across the ridge either one. Steve. Hall Ridge is an area that is well known uh, not just by locals. You'll find if you look in the parking lot you'll find people from several surrounding counties and most uh, a lot of them bring their bikes there and they ride bicycles. So when you're hiking you have to be on the lookout somebody will come popping over a ridge riding a, a mountain bike and you've got to step and get out of their way. But again, some of those trails, in fact, most of them are up on the ridges and those bikers don't like to get up there much. So <laughs> it makes for good hiking trail. It is. Steve, what are some of the, you know, Hall, people know the North Trail and Hall Ridge, but what are some of your favorite lesser known trails in, in Oak Ridge? Well, I love the Cedar Hill Greenway. As Ray mentioned, it was the first greenway in Oak Ridge with a grant from the state of Tennessee for, I think, about $15,000 to build the trail. And Ray was there with us uh, and gave us a really nice introduction at the 
um, Alexander Guest House, but, but it's one of the few trails, it's about two and a half miles, so it's something that it, just about any hiker could do. Mm -hmm. But I think it's one of the best urban trails anywhere in the United States. It also, it goes by the high school football field. It goes by the um, famous drainage tunnels that go under the football field and come out at the Civic Center that, that were highlighted in uh, the Jefferson Bass Bones of Betrayal book from Oak Ridge. Mm -hmm. It also has four restaurants on it. So it's very rare to have a hiking trail where, where there's Razzleberries and Dean's and Big Ed's and the soup kitchen. So, it, so to me, it's a fabulous destination for somebody to maybe someday have guided hikes with, with an organization or a group or a company or something, because you can go to the, you know, when it's open after COVID-19, the Alexander Guest House, the chapel on the hill, uh, you go by Pine Valley Elementary School, you go by Cedar Hill Playground, down the football field, and then all the way through historic um, Jackson Square. The second one, for someone who could just walk, my second favorite of the urban trails that are inside the city near the houses is the Worthington Cemetery Trail at Elza Gate. And it's just a mile. So if you could, if you could hike a mile, you can hike in. And it has, it's owned by the Tennessee Valley Authority because it's right on Melton Hill Lake. And it has a beautiful um, birding observation deck on some wetlands right there. But it's, it's, it, that's the, that was the first part of the Manhattan Project right there in Oak Ridge. That's the Elza Rail Spur that goes right through there to Y-12. So you're, you're hiking on that rail spur a little bit. And it's going to be, the city, city of Oak Ridge is going to turn that into a rails to trail trail that would start there at Elza Gate and end down at the Y-12 facility. And that's where one of the spurs that brought the hundreds and hundreds of rail cars of lumber and electrical equipment and the big Calutron magnets that are 20 feet by 20 feet by two feet, thousands of those, thousands of that type of product going through this hiking trail that now you can hike on today that is beautiful wildflowers and birds. So those are probably two of my favorites. Outstanding. Those are good trails for sure. And that uh, that rails to trail project is coming along. I, I don't know the exact schedule on it, but I know that it is coming to fruition and we'll see that before long. Uh, Ray, you were going to talk about Dan Robbins a little bit. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll bring us back to that. If you okay. go to the Oak Ridge Greenways online, it will tell you about all of those 85 miles of trails and they're, they're actually uh, a listing of the trails that are available and the distance on each of them and, and a description for each of the trails. Uh, and again, all you need to do is Google Oak Ridge Greenways and it, it'll come up and give you the details. Uh, Dan led the effort and continues to report on the status of the trails to the Parks and Recreation Board and to the City Council. Uh, but it was, a, a he did obtain grants from the state, and uh, I think it's recognized as one of the best greenway systems in the nation. It, uh, it really is well done. I did, a, uh, I did an interview with Dan, and I don't know if it was for one of my films, or w maybe it was for Cora for the Center for Oak Ridge Oral History, but I believe it's in the collection, I think, and he talks quite a bit about the Greenways. Uh, I think it's in the Cora collection at the library uh, or online. You can you can Google him. Um, but there's an interview with him out there somewhere that he talks quite a bit about it that people can read or watch. I might mention also that there are maps uh, available on online uh, that'll take you to each of those trails. If I can uh, I can get this thing to do what I want it to. I'll show them show them quickly to you. I've got to be quicker at this than I am right now, though. So, <laughs> Steve, is there anything else that you would uh, tell us about? Well, slow. One of the goals we have, slowly but surely, is to develop a patch for each one of the hiking trails in Oak Ridge. Right. So, one one of the ones I showed the the Haw Ridge one before. We have a west boundary in development that has the West End check station on it, where Ray's spoken to us several times. And this one is the uh, patch for the Northridge Trail of the 50th anniversary. You might be able to see in the small type there, 
1970 to 2020. So this year, anybody who hikes the Northridge Trail, I have about 15 of these left. <laughs> we can send you a patch. Mm -hmm. And hopefully, there's 13 different trails on the Greenway, so we're doing about one every quarter. So hopefully in two or three years, we'll have 13 different patches, which right. would really make a nice shadow boxer to put on someone's pack or, you know, whatever you do with the patch. <clears throat> I'm going to just quickly show you that, uh, that website that I was talking about, and then we'll come right back. I think I will. <laughs> so that's not it, is it? Hold on, here we come. So there, there's the map that you can see. There's an example of the Cedar Hill Trail. The Cedar Hill Park is there. The George access to the, this is actually the North Ridge Trail. Isn't that right, Steve? That's correct. Mm -hmm. And you can see the Mississippi access there on the left. And then it uh, crosses Illinois Avenue, uh, uh, North Walker access, Wedgwood access. As Steve was talking about, you can get to this trail from many, several different locations along Outer Drive or West Outer Drive. And uh, the section he was talking about that where Leanne Russell first saw those red flags and actually began this trail is just off of the Delaware access. And uh, there, <laughs> there's also an area there that Steve talks about that's called, I believe it's Stairway to Heaven. Right. <laughs> there must be at least a hundred steps that have been <laughs> implanted into the side of the hill there to come up. Uh, if you go in the Delaware and go over, you won't have to climb up those steps if you're looking for that uh, that huge trillium patch, right. biggest set of trillium uh, patch, biggest patch, I think. I think it's the best in Tennessee. It blooms the first week of April every year. Yeah, every year. So that's just one example. And, and you go to that website, you again, Greenways Oak Ridge, and you can get maps for all of the, the greenways and all of the hiking trails in Oak Ridge. And they're easy to, to access. And, and none of them are, have, I've talked about the stairway to heaven. Yeah, that's steep. But you won't find very many steep areas on these trails at all. They're running along the ridge tops or along the, on the North Ridge Trail, the back side of the ridge, the north side. And, uh, and you, it's not difficult hiking. Some of the best hiking I know anywhere. Anything else, Steve, that you want to be sure we get included? Well, I will mention that um, if uh, someone does uh, hike all the trails in Oak Ridge, you yes. can earn a Secret City Trekker patch and get an award from the city of Oak Ridge. This is an example of my friend Linda's award right here. I think you can see that. Right. Uh, and, and one of the reasons we, I started a hiking group about this time last year called Secret City Hikes Keith. And one of the reasons I did that was to publicize this award, which is a kind of an incentive. And in our group, we've probably had 10 or 12 of our hikers. One just earned it, got his patch yesterday. And you earn it by hiking at least a portion of all uh, of, of 11 tra trails right here. You can kind of see the 11 trails that adds up to about 50 miles. And you can earn your trekker patch which means you've been on every trail, a portion of every trail in Oak Ridge. And they're in all parts of the town, east, west, north, and south, and middle, like, like Cedar Hill and the new riparian trail at Kroger. And, and, and you really get a good feel for the hidden beauty of Oak Ridge. Mm -hmm. You just step right into this hidden beauty curtain, right from your car to all 13 of these trails without having to drive to a big national park or state park. <clears throat> Excellent. Thank you for that, Steve. That uh, You're exactly right. Best hiking I think you'll find anywhere is right here uh, in Oak Ridge. And you mentioned that newest trail. Uh, that, that trail begins right at the intersection of Illinois Avenue and the Oak Ridge Turnpike. It's in the, the northwest corner of that intersection. You can begin there. And, uh, and it meanders right along beside uh, the East Fork of Poplar Creek. And uh, there's a bridge on that, 
well, it's not on the trail, but you walk right by the bridge. And you have some memories about that bridge. Would you talk about that a little bit? It's a sturdy built concrete bridge that looks like it was built during the Man Manhattan Project or maybe just, just a few years later that, that would bridge um, Robertsville Middle School and Robertsville yeah. Baptist Church with uh, where the um, girls club, with the garden apartments or the apartments uh, on, on the Oak Ridge Turnpike. So it was definitely built for to last. <laughs> it's not going anywhere, it's a concrete bridge. And, the, and it was hidden. Nobody really knew anything about it for, gosh, what, the last 30 or 40 years. But the new riparian trail goes right by it and, and connects to it. In fact, with the houses across the Poplar Creek right there could use that to access this, this yeah. trail. So it, that's a, it's a fascinating bridge that, you know, would have probably just been disappeared in memory had this new trail not built that it is great to walk on and just wonder you know, who built that and, and why did they build it? But my dad lived in what was the garden departments back then. And he said he would go across it to watch junior high basketball games at Robertsville junior high. It, it goes right to where the old gym was. Yeah. Let, let me actually show you that, uh, that bridge. Uh, oh, wait just a minute. I got to get it up. Steve, uh, let me ask you while Ray's getting that, <laughs> Is uh, are all these trails marked? I mean, do there is there signage at the entrances or the exits of these trails? There, there's excellent there's excellent signage at the the entrances. For example, the the one most easy to find probably is the new riparian trail that's at the corner of Oak Ridge Turnpike and Illinois Avenue. Mm -hmm. And you, you, drive, you just pull into a vacant parking lot right uh, near, the, near the church right there, and you'll see the big green sign. The other end of it is near the fire, West End Fire Station on the Oak Ridge Turnpike, and it goes right behind the fire station. You can hear them talking on the, on the loudspeakers and everything there, and it connects to the sidewalk there where you can take okay. the sidewalk all the way down to, to North Banbury. So, yeah, all, right. all, the, all, the, um, all the entrances are, are marked really well. And most of the trails are marked. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, North Boundary, every tree, there's a there's a big oak trail, there's a sinkhole trail, and, and they're signed on both ends with the name of the trail. Okay. Very, very good. Very good. And you're seeing pictures of that bridge now mm -hmm. that uh, that we were talking about. So it it and notice the construction here. There's one. Notice how robust the construction <laughs> is it and it's a remember it's a walking i'm sorry it's a walking bridge mm -hmm. uh no traffic or anything was ever on it but <laughs> it's built it would hold <laughs> uh, ain't no tell how much weight so it's really over engineered over constructed but fairly typical i think of what you might have found during the during the manhattan project efforts of building in here in oak ridge so Again, a remnant in our city of a very uh, early and hidden history, if you will, uh, silos, uh, bridges, uh, a church. Uh, mm -hmm. Steve, you've helped us point out several good uh, his, hidden history items uh, within Oak Ridge. So really That's glad right. to have you do that for us. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Steve. We really appreciate it. Well, thank you, Keith and Ray, for all you do for Oak Ridge. I do want to mention, especially Ray has come and spoken to our groups mm -hmm. three different times. Here you can see a picture. We had 38 hikers at, in the front of the Alexander Guest House, and Ray has opened the Western Check Station for us a couple times. It has a beautiful collection of Ed Westcott photos in it, and I, I drove by that on the same trek to my grandparents' church in the 1960s when it was closed down. And, and it's a pillbox, you know, those guard houses are pillbox type, World War II German type fortifications, basically. And I thought, you know, I'll, I'll never be able to go inside that. So I just uh, got in touch with Ray out of the blue about a year ago and said, is there any way you'd come and say a few words to our group and open, and could you even open that? Is it even available to the public? And Ray said, yeah, I've got the key. I can open it and I'll be there. Ray's, got, group. Ray's got the key to just about everything. He's got the key to the city. <laughs> He's got the keys to the city. Oh, I will I'll, I'll tell you, I'll tell you a funny story about this, Steve. A few months ago, uh, Ray and I, 
I said, Ray, I've got an idea. And let's have, and he says, he always wants to meet at Jefferson Fountain for breakfast on a Saturday. So, so we met at Jefferson and, and we're, I, I kind of pitched him this idea of doing a podcast on hidden history. And, and of course he was all about that, but uh, he says, I've got to leave here in a few minutes. I've got to go meet Steve Oliphant and lead a group on a hike. So I think that's kind of the, the day that all this came to be was the day that, that he, he went and visited with your hikers on that, on that trail mm -hmm. that day. Uh, you, you are exactly right. That's it. That's the day that it happened. And yeah. <laughs> not only that, I had to, I couldn't finish the hike with Steve because I had to leave from there and go to a funeral. You yep. remember Steve? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. a busy, busy day. It was a busy that. day. <laughs> well, again, Steve, thank you so much for being with us. Ray, I want you to kind of, uh, uh, give us uh we're going to come back in a couple of weeks with a with a new uh hidden history uh who do we have on on schedule for that yes we do catatra vasquez is uh going to be uh with us on our next podcast she's written a book that uh we want her to talk about and uh i i think if we uh if we can bring it up here right quick, I'll show it to you. If I don't come up, well, you won't. But yeah, there it is. Let let me get let me get that down so I can share the screen. And that we're and that's scheduled for two weeks from today, uh, May the twenty third. May the twenty third. And this name of her book. Wow. Uh, Got too many of them up here, and yeah, that's okay. Me, it's all right. Give me a second. Let's get rid of that one. Have to move those up. All right, we're getting we're getting better at this. <laughs> <I hope. laughs> I don't know. I had it up there a second ago. There you go. All right. Well, well, I'm gonna her... stop that chair because I'm not not getting to where I wanted to be. But she's read a book, book, and what's is, the book about? Her book is about the African American experience in Oak Ridge during mm -hmm. the Manhattan Project, and uh, you will really enjoy her talking about it. It's a it's a it's a different kind of book. It's a book that takes you through some experiences and let you actually see some of the uh, uh, some of the uh, area where the African Americans lived when they were here and some of the difficulties they had, but also some of the uh, uh, good points about the kind of work that they were able to get to do here that they had not been able to do in, in, uh, in other places and the money that they made because they were able to come here. She's got a good book, and we'll talk about it. That's Catatra Vasquez, and uh, she'll be on with us next time. All right. Very good, Ray. And Steve, again, thanks for being with us. We really appreciate it. Thank you, Keith. Thank you, Ray. Okay. Thanks for all you do for Oak Ridge. You bet. Yes, thank you so much. All right, folks, we'll see you again in a couple of weeks.